Welcome back to WND Tech. On this channel, we focus on computer technology and gaming. So if you like this kind of content, maybe consider dropping us a subscription. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up at the end as well. In today's video, we're going to be looking at internet safety and one way that you can keep your children safe online or adults if they need keeping safe online too. Um, we're going to be looking at the Synology MR2200 router and all the safety features that this has on it. And guys, let me tell you, it's a very, very simple router to set up. Let's dive straight in. Okay guys, so we're not gonna show you how to set up this router. We may do that in another video, but this is basically gonna show you the, the safety or the safe access um, add-on that com comes with the router. It's completely free. You just install it once you've set up your router and you're obviously logged in with an admin account on it. And um, yeah, so we're gonna dive straight in. Now, we have been using this router for many months now, so um, we're fairly familiar with how it all works. And as you'll see on the screen, we've already got things set up and you can see all the devices already there to go. But we're gonna show you how to create a new profile and then what you can actually do with that profile that affects the devices that you add to it. And don't forget guys, you can do all this or most of it from the mobile phone app as well. So um, if you don't want to always do it from your PC or your laptop even, and you just want to manage it from your phone, once you've got it all set up on the router, then you can just go to the app on your phone Log in using the same login if you want to or create a new one and you can pause as you'll see later on in the video you can add devices you can remove devices you can create new profiles you can do all that kind of stuff that we're going to show you on here but you can do it all from the app on your phone which is a game changer for for our family for our internet use in our family so um, let's dive straight in and show you the safe access program as you can see on the screen in front of me we've got profiles set up for all the kids in my family yes there's there's a few and how many hours they've been online that is in the last 24 hours now it doesn't know I mean it does know when there's activity obviously but it doesn't know if say someone left a computer on and then that device was not being used as long as there was internet traffic passing from that device it will detect that as use, whether there was someone in front of that device or not. So if you've got a child and then leave Netflix on, that all counts towards their usage, which is why there's some that are quite high. And that happens a lot in my house, which is really annoying, but there's nothing I can do about that at the moment. Um, but that's neither here, here or there. So what we've done, I've removed Will's computer. Now Will's computer is up there, you can see, and he's browsing random websites at the moment. And hopefully, Hopefully they're appropriate websites because we don't want to get the video blocked. So um, William, if you can keep it appropriate, please, that would be amazing. So William is literally over there, uh, but I've got his screen up there as you can see the silly websites that he's going to. And you'll be able to see in real time the changes that we're making on the dashboard on the left of this screen. And you'll be able to see the change happen up on the top right there. So um, let's create a new profile so what you need to do is load up the safe access program and if you don't have that installed on your router and you want to use it then go to package center or you can go to the desktop and it should be there by default go to package center go to yours will not have this because there won't be anything installed unless you already have it installed of course and go to explore then all and you'll see all the different packages that you can install on your router now, if you're used to Synology products, then you will be very, very familiar with this system and the way you install apps on it. So go to Safe Access. We're gonna to go to VPN server because then I can show you what you need to do, but I've already got it installed. So go to the Safe Access program. Yes, I know it says VPN plus server, but I'm just gonna show you where you would go. You would go to install. So we're gonna install that anyway. You can always take it off afterwards. It says loading. It's gonna download the Safe Access program and that will take 
a few minutes depending on your internet speed. So when it's downloaded, obviously your window will say safe access because that's the program that you actually want to install. And then you just click apply and it will finish the installation of the product. Now, if you want to install any of the others, obviously fill your boots, install whatever you want. Um, but unless you're doing anything specific that needs things like a VPN server, a DNS server, cloud station, which is soon to be replaced actually, a media server, if you want to stream, if you want to plug an external hard drive into the router itself, it has a USB port on it. So if you want to install any of the other apps that are available on the router, then feel free to install them. Uh, I don't have, have any of these other ones installed. As you can see, it says install, even though I've just installed, um, I've just downloaded the VPN plus server. I didn't actually install it. So it still says install. So what you need to do when that's installed, run safe access and it will appear on your desktop. So we're going to open safe access as you saw it already open earlier. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new profile and then we're going to add Will's computer to this new profile. So go to the plus up there, go to add profile, click on start. Now we're creating a user profile. What that allows you to do is add specific devices to that profile against that user. So we're basically creating a user on the router. It's not one that they can log in with, it's just what they call it on the router. So we're gonna create a user profile. Uh, obviously you can create one for the entire LAN. This will take effect. This will include everything that's on your network. So if you don't want to create user profiles and you want to keep the entire internet traffic safe, then this is the one you would need to use. My local LAN. And as I said, that applies to the entire network. And you can also with this router set up a guest Wi-Fi network as well. Um, we don't have that, but you can do that just for the guest Wi-Fi access. So you can restrict that in whatever way you want to do, but it's basically the same restrictions and things as you'll see in the user profile that we're gonna create now. So those settings will also apply to both of these other two options here. So let's go next. We don't have a photo for Will. So um, what we're going to do, we're just going to give it a name. So we're going to call it Williams Test Profile. And if you can hear sound in the background, it's because Will is still browsing websites. As you can see at the top there, click next on that. Now, this is where it asks us to assign what devices you want to add to that profile. So we're going to scroll down all the devices on our network until we find Williams uh, PC, which is this one here. That is the computer that you can see up there. So we're going to create that profile. Takes a few seconds and that's it. That is the only device. That is the name of the profile. That is the device we've added to that profile. And now we're going to OK that. It's going to take us to the profile list, as you can see here, all the other profiles that we've got. The one we're interested in is this one down here. This is the one we've just created. So at the moment, there's nothing set up on it. As you can see, internet schedule there, we can set up time quota as well. We can set that up so they can only access it for a certain amount of hours per day. And there's obviously the inappropriate web filter that we can set as well. So what we're gonna do, we are going to set the web filter first. Now with the web filter, we need to turn it on first before you can make any changes to it. Now there are a few one's already preset on this. You've got obviously none, how it's set now. So Will could effectively access any website he wanted to without any restrictions. We have no other filtering on our system because I want to keep the filtering in-house, not external. So we've got a child and that restricts things from illegal websites uh, and obviously adult content as well, which he should not be accessing at all. And they've also got one here for employees. So they're basing this one uh, that you might use this in a workplace. Now, interestingly, this one prevents access to chat software and social networking like Facebook and all that kind of stuff uh, for an employee, but not for a child. So um, you can customize these separately anyway, and I'll show you that in a bit. We're gonna set child uh, for William's profile. We're gonna okay that. <laughs> Hopefully he's accessing some uh, appropriate websites above my head and he's <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Anyways, now this, this may not change because obviously we can't show inappropriate content on a YouTube video. So this might not change, but in a, in a real world scenario where maybe a website that he's visiting has a link to something else, that will pop up here 
and show how many times that someone has tried to access an, a blocked or an inappropriate website, which is really, really good because you get control then because sometimes it goes, it gets it wrong and you want to allow them to access or temporarily allow them to access something. Say if they wanted to download a mod for a game, for example, then mostly those things are blocked on the child, on the preset child profile. So you, you would have to go in and allow that, allow access to that. And the good thing is with the, using the app, it comes up if you enable push notifications when you install the app, um, when you link it to your router, you can enable push notification and whenever there's an attempt or an inappropriate attempt or anything like that, it pops up as a push notification on your phone so you can see um, what it is that has tried to access it and what the IP address is. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you the device name. Now, I'm hoping they fix that later on down the line, but it would be more useful to show the device name and the profile that was linked to that attempt on your what that shows up on your phone uh, rather than the IP address, because not everyone knows the IP addresses of all the devices on the network. So friendly names, user friendly names would be more preferable. I think that's something they should change. OK, so before we do anything more, let's go and have a look at some of the other settings that you can set for the child profile. So we can get set the internet schedule where you can allow or block internet access for down to, I think it's the 15 minute intervals, which is really good. So if you wanted to stop them from using the internet, make sure you click on the blocked or allow option there. And then you can block internet access. So today it is Saturday and it's around 18.45. So if I do it from there and block that, what that will do if I click that, it will turn his internet access off. So when he next tries to go on a website, it will come up and say your internet access is blocked. So Will, if you can go to a website you haven't already been to, or one you have, it doesn't matter, just refresh the page and you'll see the message that pops up on the screen. So it says no in internet connection. Now, if you're, if he's, he's on a wired device, what it does is it stops internet traffic. It doesn't stop local network traffic. But as we're talking about internet traffic in any case, um, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> he's changing the text on the screen. Oh, he's such, such a noob. But um, so that stops him getting access to the internet. So things like Discord, anything that uses the internet will stop working because he's now outside of his scheduled internet use. And he's there trying to change. <laughs> no breakfast for Will. So as you can see, that's the message that comes out. It doesn't say no breakfast, guys. Will's <laughs> changing the text on that. Um, yeah, you've got to be careful of your kids. They'll try anything to get around these restrictions. But trust me, he hasn't been able to do it yet. So that's 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 a good thing. That's a good thing. No, you haven't. I know you haven't. So that's the internet schedule. So we're going to re-enable that. We're going to let him back on because we kind of need it back on to show what else we can do. So we're going to allow the internet schedule um, to put it back to where it was. So this is enabled now and that will allow him to go back on. So that page is now going to load on his screen and you'll see that load in a minute. If he refreshes the page, it will load whatever website it was trying to go to in the first place. OK, so that's the website that he was trying to go to initially. I guess it's some sort of meme website. Um, so let's see what else we can do. If you want to restrict the internet, that's where you go internet schedule on the user profile. So we can also set a time quota within this schedule itself. So if you want to set, if you want to allow access for the entire day, that's absolutely fine. Um, you can also restrict it by time. Now we can turn this off, uh, on, sorry. We can turn it on and we can set how many hours per day that we want William to access. So we're going to allow him 15 minutes of access per day. That, that, that's quite mean. So because he's probably already used it, it counts the time since the user was added to the profile, not at the point, not from the point that you've added that feature. He's already used time. So it already says he's got 18, eight minutes left, which is also great. It doesn't do it from the point you, you change that. It does it from, from when he's connected. <laughs> this is going to random websites. So he's got eight minutes of internet left which is great. And it tells you this on the app 
as well. Okay, so the other thing that you can do is safe search. Now this is for, as you can see there, safe search helps filter out inappropriate websites from uh, search results from Google, Bing, and YouTube. Now the YouTube is the big one here. Now you can independ independently turn these on or off and you can choose what type of restricted mode for YouTube that you want. Now this, this works really, really well. And the YouTube one is a big one, especially for our house where a lot of content is consumed and not everything that you see on YouTube is appropriate. And there's not a lot of control with normal home routers for YouTube filtering. It relies on, on the parents to do the filtering for them. But that's a lot of work when you've got four kids in the house. And this is a great way of at least helping to, to limit the type of content that they can access. So the problem we're trying to show this on camera is that we can't really show other people's YouTube videos as such because of uh, copyright and things like that. So um, you're just gonna have to take my word for it that it, it works really well. And what it does, it just, YouTube will come up with a warning saying, this video has been blocked, uh, is restricted, and it just won't allow your, your kids to play that particular video. Whatever device that is, it doesn't matter if it's on your phone, on the computer, on a tablet, on a laptop, whatever device that you've added to the user profile that we've created here will be included in those restrictions. And um, that, that's, it's a great, great thing. Also here we've got Google uh, Safe Search as well. These two are kind of linked, but you can separate them out. So this one here will, Google Safe Search can filter out violent and adult content from your search results. And also the same with uh, Bing here. Bing Safe Search can filter out adult content, images and videos from your search results. And they, they all do basically the same thing. Now, no filter is 100% safe some things that haven't been added to the the database that it uses for these uh, will be missed and every now and then they will be able to access something that they can't but as i've said no child safety filter is 100 percent so as long as you know that right from the get-go it, it really doesn't matter which filtering service you're using if you're using something totally different and you're looking for something else um, because of really because of the flexibility that you, that you have with the Synology router it is the reason that I went for it. it. It's just totally different and it's just so easy to control and the fact that you can do it on your app was a big plus uh, in our buying decision for this. So we're going to go into um, security here. Now to enable safe search, Google safe search, you have to get a key. Now there are very simple instructions on how to do this. It literally takes five minutes to do. Click on the learn more button here and it will help you and give you a link to where you need to go. It's very, very simple to get the key. It explains everything. I'm not gonna go through that now, but you do need that API key enabled to enable the Google Safe Search. Now you can add exceptions to that list so it will not filter them. So as you can see there, I've unfiltered Mediafire because as I said earlier they download mods and that's one of the places where they get their mods for things like Minecraft. So here you can see a list of everything that is on our network that's tried to access anything either inappropriate or malicious it will show you here and the IP address that it tries to access and what device. It won't show you this on the app which is what I was talking about earlier it would be really good if it would show this in some meaningful way on the app so that you don't have to go in and log in to the router. But um, if you wanna see all this in detail, then obviously you can do that here. And as you can see here, everything tells you what type here. So we've got adult, malicious, um, all that kind of stuff. So anything that has a link to anything else on it. So for example, these things here, I know for a fact that no one's tried to access it, but there's a link on a website that she goes to that has a link to IMView on it, which is why it comes up on here because it blocks access to that as well. Because that's considered adult because there are, there are adult, it's an adult thing really. So um, that's why that shows up on here. And as you can see, as we move down the list, other things that show up as well. So that's really good to see what your kids have tried accessing or what websites have tried accessing that. 
as well. So that's really good. Now, if you've got the app set up, as I was talking about earlier, and you've got push notifications set up, you can also have them emailed to you, or you can have them sent as a text to you as well. And you can have them pushed by the mobile app. Uh, so what we do, we've set them up on, on the app. As long as you've got the Synology app installed and you're logged into it, it will send these notifications to you by the app or you can have them show up on your desktop as well. Uh, this one only seems to work if you're logged into the router. What that actually means is it shows up here in the desktop when you're logged in, as I said, when you're logged into the router. So that is basically how you set up a user profile. Um, let's just go back into the profiles there and go back into William's profile and show you how you can add your own profile if you want to set your own up and you don't want to use the default ones. That's absolutely fine. So go to custom and then set up. And then here you can see I've already added Netflix into it because we've been playing around with this before. And this is an allow. So what we want to do, we want to block. We want to block a website. Now we can give the web filter a name. We're going to call this block filter. And we're going to give this a color. Let's give it a blue color. And this is going to be a block filter. So from here, you can set the type of categories that you want blocked. Now, obviously, depending on the type of person that you're creating the profile for, depends on what options you select here. But as this is for a child, we're gonna be blocking um, adult, we're gonna be blocking advertising, because you know we don't want advertising popping, popping up on websites and things like that. We're gonna be blocking drugs, we're gonna be blocking hacking, uh, not sports, we're going to be blocking violence, gambling, dangerous materials, uh, dating, and any redirect to websites. So websites that will then link to something else that could be malicious. Uh, anything to do with wares and social media. Now that, what that should do is that should block all those categories. Um, and here you can also add your own if you want to block them but we're not going to add our own so we're just going to apply that okay so we've created another profile now obviously i've already got the netflix one there to to test this out we need to select the block filter we want to enable that one so you now have to make sure that you've got that selected if you've got more than one and then we need to okay that oh look there we go it's blocked a load of stuff there <laughs> you see all that stuff come up as i've enabled that filter so uh, Will is going to go to Facebook now and hopefully, hopefully it blocks that page. Now let's see what the message that comes up for that. So it's still applying the setting that's applied now. So if you go to type in manually facebook.com and you can see down there, look, we've got 21 times it's, it's blocked. So hopefully now that has taken effect and it's now going to block access to Facebook. So Will's going to type in manually facebook.com and hopefully that is one of the websites that's blocked under the social media option. And there we can go. Your connection isn't private because it's actually starting to block it. Now, as we see up here, look, he's tried to access uh, that website under the social media option that we've blocked here, look. So it comes up. So these are the type of notifications that you will also get on your phone as well. And I have to apologize to my wife in a minute because she's gonna be getting these notifications on her phone, she's probably going to be wondering what the heck is going on. So um, <laughs> I need to apologize to her in a moment. But um, the great thing is it tells you all this. And as you can see, there's nothing you can do apart from browse other random websites, which is great. So we're going to change that back now because we don't actually block uh, Facebook. Will doesn't have, obviously, obviously have a Facebook account because he's uh, not old enough to have one. So we're going to change that back to child because that one seems to work pretty well in blocking the things that we want to be blocked. So we're going to change that back now and set that as the default child profile. Now, if you want to customize uh, the block page, now you can see that we've customized one there. We were messing about earlier and we've called ours. You have won our prize draw. This is totally not a scam and you have actually won this graphics card of epic oh someone spelled that wrong epic epic proportions um yeah we spelled it wrong because normally these things are spelled incorrectly that's how you spot that they're fake um but this this is the block page so we're going to try and show that block page on 
the website. So Will, if you can try and go to a website that is blocked, just so we can see that come up on the screen. So I blocked Mediafire so that we can show you what it what it comes up with and how that shows up on the website. So Will, if you can go to Mediafire.com and hopefully that will show the block page that we've got set on our screen here. So here we go. So Will's got the block page. For some reason, it doesn't show the images in, uh, in the browser that we're using. We're using Microsoft Edge. Um, it seems to be a bit hit and miss with the images, uh, which is why we've got these, but these would be showing on the page right now. Um, but you can see there, it's got the text that we've got on there, look, and it's got all this here that we've got. And it also gives the option of allowing the user, because they're not always gonna be childs, and you might want them to request access to a website. So Will is gonna click the submit a request button now. And as you can see there on the screen, that allows him to, to put a request in. And again, you will get a notification on your phone and on the app that they've sent that request. So Will, if you can request that, and we should see that pop up on the dashboard. And there we go. We can see it's popped up up here and it tells us that Will has put a request in for access to that. Now, another thing that I would really like to see is that when you click on these, it goes to the thing it's talking about. So now we have to go to safe access and go to access request here. We were already in it so that we can see that. And here you can see William's request. This is the profile that it's talking about. So it does tell you the user that's requesting it and you can either reject it or approve it. Now, um, we're gonna reject this because I want to see what happens on the screen. And it tells him there that the request was submitted uh, to the Synology router administrator, which is obviously me. So if you try and refresh that page, Will, go to mediafire.com again, it will go back to the submit a request button. So if you put another request in, Will, I'm going to allow it this time. Okay, so that request has gone in. We'll get a notification pop up up there again in a minute. There we go, there's the notification. And sometimes you have to come off the page and then go back for it to show up. There we go. Williams test profile, so we're gonna accept that one. Okay, Will, so it doesn't automatically refresh. So Will, if you can refresh that page and it should allow you access to to that. Now, I don't know how long it takes for that to take effect. So Will, if you can refresh that again, and um, we'll see if we can do this live. So there you go, it's gone to the website and that literally took a few seconds for that to take effect. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go to Will's profile, we're gonna go to the profile page again, and we're actually going to do something which is a really useful feature. Now this is available on other things as well, but I find it's a really useful one if you need them to say, come down for dinner, if it's dinner time, and um, you just need to just make them known make them known that it's dinner time if you call them down and they don't come down then this is a good way of doing it so what you can do here you can pause their internet now will is going to just keep trying to access random pages that happens instantly so now when will tries to access something it's going to come up on the page that he has no internet connection as you can see above and that happens straight away and you can obviously do that with the app as well now obviously Will's gonna go in and try and change the text again because that's the type of person he is, but he's a cheeky little monkey. But uh, that's another great feature that you have. So the router has all sorts of other features as well. We're not gonna go through all the features in this video because this was about the safe access part of it. Now I think we've gone through most of the things, but if there is anything we've missed in the safe access that you would like me to dive into in a bit more depth, then uh, do comment down below and we'll try and cover that in another video. So hopefully this video was somewhat useful to you in showing you that the Synology MR2200 can help you with your children's internet safety. So it's not the cheapest of routers, but I was looking for something to replace, not add to the network. And I didn't want to add one of these little um, like filtering only boxes, like um, things like Circle, stuff like that. 
um, and, and not be able to have other features as well. Now also this thing, it's a router, so it has Wi-Fi built in as well. You can set up uh, your own Wi-Fi network, so you can set up a guest Wi-Fi network, and you can have one separate for children, which is what I do. I have one separate for the kids, and I keep adults on a separate Wi-Fi network as well. And you've got a little more flexibility there on uh, things like speed restrictions as well, if you don't want to limit the entire network. Um, which we'll talk about in other videos. Will was giving me a really dirty look because I have slowed his internet traffic down so bad that he can't stream or browse anything uh, I was just playing about. Anyway, if you want to see more features that this router has, then please do comment in the video description, uh, in, the, in the comment section down below, and we will definitely cover those in future videos because it is a versatile router and you can add more than one router and create a mesh network, which is probably what we're going to be looking at um, soon. But it obviously does mean that you need to buy the same product again. So that pretty much wraps up our video. Hopefully the features of the safe access are something that you've been looking for and you're now looking for a new router. This router is not new, so it's been out a little while, but it still has a lot of value. And especially when kids who knows, the kids could go back into lockdown and we could all be working from home again, then this is a must have for keeping your kids safe online. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video. Hopefully there was a lots of useful information in this for you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and maybe drop us a subscribe as well. And we'll see you in the next video.